Hello, my name's Rachel and I'm a senior biomedical scientist based at York Hospital. Uh, my main role is to work in the laboratories in the pathology department, but part of my role is also to perform sweat tests. So we're just going to talk to you today about what sweat test involves. So why do we perform sweat tests? Uh, we perform a sweat test to measure the amount of chloride in the sweat. Um, the consultant may request this if they either suspect somebody of having cystic fibrosis or if they want to rule out a diagnosis of cystic fibrosis. Um, who are sweat tests carried out on? So we perform sweat tests on uh, newborn babies that have had a positive heel prick. Um, so one of the tests that, that measures is immunoreactive trypsinogen or IRT for short. So if this is elevated in the newborn screening, we can perform a sweat test on those babies. We also do sweat tests on babies or toddlers that are failing to thrive or are suffering from repeat chest infections. And we also do them on adults that are suffering from repeat chest infections. How is the test carried out? So we perform the test using some special gel discs with a chemical called pilocarpine. Um, so these gel discs are placed on the arm um, and we strap them in place with the disposable straps. We then pass a small electric current through them and this stimulates the sweating underneath the red electrode. Um, once this has been on for about five minutes, um, we take them off and we give the skin a good clean to water and dry it and we then strap a collecting device on top of where the red electrode was. We leave this in place for between 20 and 30 minutes um, while the um, coil absorbs the sweat and after 30 minutes we take uh, the, the device off we extract the sweat and then we send it to the laboratory for analysis. Let me introduce Laura, a cystic fibrosis specialist nurse who's kindly volunteered to have a sweat test performed on her today. Hello. Right Laura, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to clean your arm. We're going to clean it with um, an alcohol wipe first. We'll then give it a clean with some pure water and then we'll dry it again. After that we're going to attach, um, these are the special pilocarpine discs here. We'll put one in each one of these. We'll strap them onto your arm and then that will stay on there for about, about eight, five or eight minutes. Um, so we'll make a start. So let's, let's do that. Okay, so we're going to put the black one on first. Get the jelly discs out. So they're a little bit cold, so we've just been in the fridge, but it's not too much of a shock. So we'll put that up there. Just your hand out, you can be there for a little while now. Press start on there. And then you can just hold on to these for a little while. Right, so that bit's finished now. It's beat platters. So we'll take the black one off first. So what happens here is a hole in the back of this device 
and this is the big this is the big tube that's being coiled round. So what we'll do is we'll put it on, put it on really tight, and the sweat will be forced up into the back there. There's some vegetable dye in there that will turn the sweat blue, mm -hmm. and that's just so that we can see how much we're collecting, because we do need a certain amount to be able to perform. Okay, so we'll pop this one over the top of where the red electrode was. We'll strap this in place. So we do have to put it on quite tight. Um, it, it might feel a bit tingly, but we do need it on tight enough. So what we're going to do is we're going to wait for this to start going blue now, because that means the sweat started collecting. Once we see that it's blue, we can start our timer on here, and then it'll be on for between 20 and 30 minutes, depending on how much sweat we're getting. So what we normally ask is we ask patients to pop a, a jumper or a coat or anything they've got to keep them warm but you haven't got one but you look like you're sweating pretty quickly anyway yeah, so I think it'll be alright. <laughs> uh, yeah so we just keep this on now so in 20 minutes we'll check it if we've got enough we can take it off because we haven't quite got enough we can leave it for a fair 10 minutes and then after 30 minutes we have to take it off with the body. Okay so we've had our 20 minutes and we've got plenty of sweat there so we're going to take the parafilm off. Right, so the next thing we need to get to this coil that's inside there. So I'm going to use this, it's not going on the skin, I'm just going to use it to prise this, this plastic cover off. It can be tricky, so sometimes it takes a few attempts. That was all right. Okay, so the next bit we need to get this coil. So I need to find the end of it, I'm going to put this in the end again, it's not going in your skin. The sweat's in there, so we'll send that off to the lab and then we can just release these straps. So sometimes you're left with a little bit of glue on there, that, and that's just, just from the vegetable diving. So, how did that feel, Laura? Could you feel it when the electrodes were on earlier? Um, I could feel it. There was a slight sort of tingling feeling, but it wasn't painful at all, and, and it went as soon as you took it off. Yeah, and then the, the collecting had to put on quite tight, so again, that can be a bit tingly, but it's normally. Yeah, no, that, right. that was okay. That, yeah, I mean, it was a little bit tight, but it was there at all. Yeah. As you can imagine, this test is a lot easier to perform on adult patients that are less wriggly. Uh, we do do plenty of these on children as well, though, and we are used to it. Um, we do need them to keep still sort of for the first five minutes while we've got the electrodes on them. So if you could bring like a favourite book or a favourite toy they could play with while they're sat down. Um, and then once the collecting duct is on for the 30 minutes, they don't have to sit still then, they are free to go and play or, or run around, it's fine. What about the results? Um, so the results will either show, show a very high level and indicate um, a diagnosis of cystic fibrosis, or there'll be normal levels of chloride in there and occasional past negative. Occasionally we do get a borderline equivocal area where we might ask, ask you to come back for a repeat sweat test another day. Um, also on the day of this occasion we don't actually collect enough sweat to be able to do the test. In those cases um, we could either, we normally know there and then that there's not enough, we could either ask if you wanted to have it done again there and then or we could book you to come back in another day whichever is most convenient for you. Um, the results, you'll either get the results the same day or the following day just depending on the time of day you had it done and the staffing levels.